Hi, and welcome to another QLD Off-Road Adventures production, and thank you for supporting us and our content. Hi guys, my name is Darren, this is QLD Off-Road Adventures. Today we're fitting a new consoles to our door trim, um, mainly speaker pods and uh, cup holders. These are made by uh, Cruiser Consoles. Um, I actually quite like the product. I'll give you a quick look at what they look like and then explain a bit more about them. Okay, this is uh, Cruise Console. Um, the first thing I suppose I should say that we're not affiliated in any way to Cruise Consoles. We did purchase these items, and uh, but I, I don't mind giving a bit of a plug. It is a very good product in my opinion. They're very nicely done, and they incorporate some of what you already have, um, i.e. Uh, so this is the 6x9 uh, oval that we got, um, and this is the actual product. So this is uh, uh, plastic. And then in the back here, they've got um, a bit of MDF in there, so it gives you a nice firm base for your speakers. Um, and uh, yeah, they, they're fairly solidly made. Now, the best part about them is, and I'll show you one that I have prepared earlier, uh, you will be using your own door pockets. And as you can see, when the door pockets are fitted, it actually creates another cup holder. Now, I've already got a uh, center console with cup holders because I have um, put a um, uh, Department of Interior console on my vehicle. But uh, yeah, so these, these are for the door trims. Um, I'm, I'm quite liking them. They're very nicely made. They really match color well. They nicely shape even the interface between the factory pockets, which you will transplant to these. And everything has been done very well. So no, good product. I'm quite happy to give them a bit of a plug. Um, so we'll show you what we're actually going to do to fit them. Now we're back here so we'll go into it um, these little marks so you, you remove your old um, map pocket and then um, you you get the the actual uh, console part so we'll show you this um, and you, you obviously fit your factory pocket to it using their screws and that they do sit in very nicely in actual fact if you have a very close look they the plastic pulls them quite firmly around that screw, so um, I think that even on some pretty heavy corrugation, I don't think it'll come out. Then they give you these uh, little things. This is the first time I've come across these. It's a brilliant little idea. Um, so you, you take them off the off the tree. I'll show you what I mean by that. So they come in a tree like this, and uh, you take them off. You put them in all the screw holes, um, and they actually tell you in the instructions to put a bit of... Um, white ball uh, like whiteboard marker on there which is a fantastic idea because you can wipe it off after um, or if you make a mistake um, then they give you precise measurements um, which we've done um, then you fit it over it leaves marks where the screws need to go and then um, obviously you drill them out now um, once that's done you overlay that and you mark it so this is where it gets um, it's always that uh, moment where you really want to be sure so I've double checked, triple checked, quadruple checked everything because obviously we only get one chance at this. So now we'll um, cut that out and then um, obviously get the saw and cut out underneath. Okay, so what we've actually done is we've cut that out now and now we're about to cut it. And there's an actual hole here, this hole as well as this one and another um, over here. These are locator holes um, for the previous, uh, when the map pocket was there. So that hole is actually perfect for your jigsaw. So you can just place your jigsaw in there and then start cutting from there and uh, shouldn't have any problems. Okay, so now we've cut this out. Um, as you can see, we use the existing hole and um, yeah, it's cut out very nicely. Um, now, um, although where these ribs are here, um, this is glued on, this part down here is not. And although realistically nothing should get behind there, and this is personal preference, I am going to put a bit of glue, um, just a bit of quick grip gel in there, and just probably in, in this top piece here too, just to ensure that it is well bonded and that um, it doesn't end up at some point. I mean, the pocket does cover it um, well and truly, um, like so, but uh, I think um, there is a bit of a gap between this and that and that, that does have potential for lifting so I'm on a personal note I'm just going to put a bit of um, gel grip or something in there. Okay so I've removed all the little 
uh, pointy bits now that we've cut it out. And then what I've done is I've put a screw in here and uh, another little screw in there. Um, the reason I've done that is so that I can locate it. It's going to be very, very difficult to see through a hole that's basically covered over um, like that, whether you know you're lining up with the hole. Because if you've done that, if I now take that and then line it up with the hole like so, and I do the same thing on the other side, I can be pretty well assured that it's all going to line up perfectly so that when I screw it in, we're not going to have any problems. All right, what sort of speakers did we get? Well, we got the Pioneer TSD69F. Why did we get them? Well, been recommended. Um, they're actually not a bad speaker. They're uh, quite a good quality. They've got a uh, full screen. A lot of the modern ones don't have a full screen anymore, which for me presents a big problem. It is a four drive. There's likely to be dirt and mud. This screen is fairly fine, so the likelihood is it shouldn't penetrate. Um, a lot of them nowadays, they've got the big cutouts, so the the actual mesh has like a big cutout or there's no mesh at all, they're actually exposed. And that, uh, to me in a car, that might work, in a four drive it won't. Now, let's have a look at them. Um, okay, so there's some of the specs on this speaker. Um, they, um, I'll just try and zoom in so for anybody interested, they can actually have a look at them. Um, they're not a bad speaker. And uh, for the value for money that I got, they, um, they're certainly there. And um, I think, uh, yeah, they should do pretty well. We'll, let you... well, so there you have it. Um, that's now done. So you've got your uh, speaker here, as you can see. And uh, we've got our uh, cup holder down there, which is a uh, very good size. So you'll definitely get a decent sized bottle of water or even Coke or something in there. And uh, yeah, no, she's, uh, she looks the part, that's for sure. It sits very nicely. Um, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. So now we need to um, soundproof the doors, which we've never done when we did the rest of the car, and then uh, fit the, um, the uh, panels back to it. So we'll uh, go and have a look at that. Okay, so um, this enti the entire car has been um, insulated with a um, two-part uh, insulator. So we've got this acoustic liner and we've also got the bitumized um, aluminium one. So the bitumized aluminium one went in first and then this uh, multi-layer acoustic liner went over the top. Both of them are by car builders um, here in Australia, uh, I believe they're in Sydney. Um, I've been very happy with that product. Now, the only probably downfall, but uh, that's a question of comfort over um, you know, weight. Um, the bitumized aluminium liner is very, very heavy, and uh, this stuff's not too bad, but it's c still could carry a bit of weight. So, by the time you add the two together um, and coat the entire car, it does get quite uh, a bit of weight added to it. Um, the uh, uh, this acoustic liner will go on the inside of the door. I am not putting the bitumized aluminium liner inside the door. Um, purely because I personally don't think I'll need it and uh, there's also a little bit of limited room you, you do have to allow for windows to go up and down and so, so on and um, I just don't want to have any issues I'm sure it's doable, I'm sure many have done it but um, as far as I'm concerned I'll just be putting this inside the door Okay, so we've stripped the um, inside of the door and removed um, the plastic that, that plastic by the way is very important make sure you put it back and as you can see, um, you do have that very sticky residue, um, which is like a glue that goes right around. Um, look, it's, it gets everywhere very easily. Um, it certainly gets on your hands very quickly. Um, and uh, just remember that uh, it cleans up with turps fairly easily, but obviously be careful what you touch, in particular um, your soft furnishings like seeds and stuff while you're doing that now. So it's going to be a bit hard to see. I will try. There you go. Okay, so if you look inside there, that's that bar that you see there, that's actually a side impact bar. So you've got to try and bring the insulation up underneath, up to there, and then from there upwards. Keeping in mind um, your door handles are content with electricals, um, including a quite a substantial harness and the GXL ones for 
your um, uh, windows and uh, there's also a harness in the bottom for your locking mechanisms and another one here also um, so just ensure that um, you don't um, obviously get in the way of those or um, impede those so you just have to work around them a little bit um, and uh, we'll um, have to see how it all goes back together okay something else that just occurred to me that I probably should mention um, in case you're not aware of it if you look right down in the bottom here that's your drainage channel see all that uh, brown down there that's not rust it's um, dirt and that dirt um, comes down through windows and so on and so forth through the handles and it travels along and at the end of e either end which is a bit hard to see but right down the end there there's a, an outlet um, you can see a bit of daylight coming through and you've got the same down this end that's to let the water out of the door so make sure that you do not coat that um, or cover it with the insulation uh, or sound barrier because that will certainly um, cause some problems for you later on these uh, weep holes are very very important they must remain open so when you do bring your sound batting down probably just try and stay about an inch above it so give yourself a good you know 25 30 mil um, it's not going to make an ounce of difference to your sound, but uh, it's going to make sure that the water does get back out. Okay, just to give you another bit of insight into this stuff. Um, if you were to peel the back um, and then try and force it through a hole, this is um, extremely sticky stuff. Um, it will quite literally stick to everything. So one of the tricks that I've done, it's going to be a bit hard to show you. Okay, so this stuff here, the sound proofing. Um, one of the keys to it is that when you stick it inside the door, it's going to be nigh and impossible to get this um, white stuff off. If you do take the backing off before you put it in, it's going to stick to everything. So one of the things that I've done is I will undo the backing. So I'll show you. We'll take the backing off, which is very firmly attached, and then very loosely reattach it. So overlay it again and now when it comes time to peel it I can put it inside the door peel it off and then stick it um, because I've got very easy um, way to get it off now because I've already done it once now that I'm done I'm going to show you how it all came in so that's all now been lined inside there um, equally at the top obviously around the door handle it's not something you can do that's not that drastic the only difference is that down here, and I'm sorry, it is a bit hard to see, I've put a double layer. Um, so this is where the speaker is actually going to sit. And I've put a double layer in there, and what that will do is it'll take some of the shock out of the door so you won't get that horrible noise from the door reverberating. Okay, so as you can see, um, we have got the pod fitted. So there's the speaker and the pod. Um, it's a cup holder and uh, yeah, it looks good. It uh, looks like it belongs. Um, there are a couple of issues. Um, I used to have a fire extinguisher down here, which um, now I can no longer have. Um, due to the extent of the pocket sticking out, it's now colliding. So I've got to relocate that and seal those holes. Um, so that's a bit unfortunate. But uh, yeah, something worth keeping in mind, it comes out considerably more, so you're looking at least an inch further out. Um, so that uh, does make a bit of a difference. Now, the wiring, I've deliberately split it in case you need to do any work. Um, ordinarily I'd try not to, but I will um, solder and heat shrink them. Um, we will from there have to run the wire down uh, in the sill. And just to show you, I apologise for that. Um, it'll run to the back, and uh, this is where the amplifier is. Now the amplifier is uh, fitted to a um, composite board, which is aluminium polymer uh, coated uh, polymer. So um, that gives it a bit of a fire safety in case of excessive heat or malfunction. And uh, yeah, it's uh, all the wiring will end up coming through the back to there, and then run underneath. One of the other reasons I don't um, particularly like the idea of fitting um, these floor sups under the seat, um, 
This is a four-wheel drive, and although I'd try very hard not to, the chances are sooner or later I will have water ingress into the cab. And if this uh, amplifier and subwoofer is on the floor, it will get wet and fail as a result of it, or short circuit and uh, cost a lot of money to fix. So e either way, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, it's just better to lift it up. Um, if water gets this high up, there's a substantial space underneath. So if, if it gets that high, then um, I think, uh, well, it deserves to get wet. So then I've done something very wrong anyway, and they'll have big issues. Thank you for watching this QLD Off-Road Adventures production. Please subscribe to our channel if you wish to support this content.